people's time. So um, Scott is our uh, tech guru today, and uh, we are recording this meeting so that it can be shared with others later. Um, a few things. First of all, welcome um, and thank you for joining us for our State of the Church uh, meeting today. Uh, this is the first time we've done something like this. And so we ask for your patience with us as we um, share some important things with you about, about the ministries of our church. We have a lot of exciting things to share and uh, we're excited about that today. Um, just a few things to tell you. We are going to actually mute everyone um, so that there isn't any interference or anything during the time that doesn't distract. Um, so Scott will be muting everyone. And then um, at the end of our time together, we will have an opportunity to uh, have some questions and answers. And all of that will be done through the chat. So if you have questions about anything, um, please feel free to um, put your questions in the chat and we will um, answer them at the end of our time together today. So um, we thank you for, for joining us today. Um, the things that we are going to share today um, are about how our church has impacted our community in the last year. We're gonna give you some updates on our church ministries and our staff. We will also give you a snapshot of our current financial situation. And then Pastor Lara and I will share our vision for the future of our church, uh, for doing vital ministry here in Lakewood um, and how that will be um, financially and, and everything beyond that. And then we'll have some time for some questions and answers. And so as we begin our time together uh, this morning, we're going to pray. So let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the ministries of Lakewood United Methodist Church. We thank you for the faithful who have gathered here on this meeting this morning and the faithful who have gone before us who make this church, its building, its ministries possible. During our time together, oh God, be present to us. Help us to see you in all of the activity, in all of the ways that we are your hands and feet in this community. And may we um, be emboldened mm -hmm. to be your body here in Lakewood and throughout the world. We pray all of this in the name of your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, and with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So as we uh, begin today, Pastor Lara is going to share with us about our church's impact, how our church has made an impact on the community in the last year. Pastor Lara? All right. So some of you have read about this in the stewardship letter and other articles and things that we've put out, but we just, there's no way I mean, if we were to do what the presidents do and give the state of the union, we're kind of given a state of the union today. And we're talking about, I think some of the good things that have happened. Um, and, uh, there's not much tension like the state of the union. That's here true. Today. That's right. <laughs> but there's no way to encapsulate all of those things. These are just some highlights yeah. that you're going to so share. So we want to highlight us. some of the things we've done this past year, especially just to, to celebrate together. And so about a year ago, um, we were beginning to uh, put the groundwork together for our Trees of Hope. And the Trees of Hope was truly last year, just uh, a way for us to celebrate Christmas when we couldn't be together and to really connect with our community. And so last year we had these trees of hope that were up and we are planning on doing that again this year, as long as we can find trees. <laughs> I, we, we've heard there might be a tree shortage, but we are planning to purchase the trees to have about 25 trees out there for individuals, groups, um, families within the church to sponsor and adopt. And so that's planning to happen this year and a great way to celebrate. And one of the things that came out of the Trees of Hope last year was we had a giving tree um, 
and that tree was available during Christmas. It had like hats and gloves and stuff on it. Well, when we went to take the trees down, we didn't think it would be possible to just stop that ministry. So with the youth, we created a warming wall and uh, that went throughout the three months of winter. And we plan on doing that as well, especially this year with our new little alcove area. I don't know what we call that, but the new little sitting area off the sidewalk will be a great place for us to have that warming wall again this year. So those are some great ways that we connect with the community as well as the food pantry box. Yes. Because last yeah. night, some people asked about that. Um, and the pantry box is continuing to be used. And it's a blessing to watch because every day we see people coming to it. Just last night, people were there filling it. And then people in the community, We, what's beautiful is it's a way that people know our church by that box. That's right. People give to it from the community that aren't connected to our church and people are always are receiving from it too. Yeah. So those are just some great ways that we're connecting our community as well as community meals. Through all the pandemic, the community meals have not stopped. Um, they have continued to flourish. Um, and we just really thank those who are involved in that ministry, the Tuesday night and the Saturday community meals. And if you've never volunteered, now's your chance to Next step up. Tuesday night, the week yeah. of Thanksgiving, we have one and we will certainly need helpers That's right. um, for that week. So, but we've kind of had to adapt. Yeah. Help out. But we've had to adapt. Like most of the things in the life, the church, we're no longer feeding everyone in Daniel's hall. We have to go and take out options. The summer it was nice because people could eat under the tent, but with, COVID, we're just, Being we're staying conscious. safe. We're staying safe. And then how can we not think of Bible school and the children in the life of this church? And we had a phenomenal Bible school this year. It was great to have it again. It was um, adjusted. And we thank Shannon Lubis for just her efforts and with the volunteers to make it possible. We this year decided to keep it to our church family, which was something we had never done before. Um, we missed all the community friends and the ways that we use that as an outreach to commu the community, but it was beautiful for the children of this church, I think, because they had been separated and not together for so long, that they actually got to come together and it was beautiful to watch the bonds form within the children and youth of this church from that event. And for me, as a new pastor here, it was really great to have the the church children, um, not community children there, just so that I had an opportunity to get to know the kids of the church in a better way than mm -hmm. if we had had, you know, 100 additional kids here during that time. So it was definitely a, a blessing for us. Yep. So we Here's celebrate some. all that fun. I mean, <laughs> those kids, we are blessed truly as a church with just some amazing families and children and youth in this church. So we celebrate that. And how can we not think of some of the things that we've done through COVID? And some of you will see your smiling faces up there or singing faces up there right now. Um, through the pandemic, we have continued to find ways to innovate. And we really give thanks to Julie Stunick um, for her creative ways. The choir, those of you who aren't aware, they've pretty much stayed together meeting every Thursday be, or most Thursdays via, via Zoom. Via Zoom. And that's good. Practices are going to start again in That's right. The December. first week of December, choir will be back in person again. So we're excited about that. As, as much well. as we love those video montages, they are going to come to an end. And we will be grateful <laughs> to see people in person. So, and also there's Zoom. We had Zoom Bible studies, Zoom fellowship times, all kinds of things via Zoom that yeah. we managed to still stay connected to one another, which was important. Which is very important. And I think we've also learned from that, that Zoom, just like today, is a great tool for us um, to use. I think Bible studies, there's people who would never come into the building for a Bible study because it just doesn't work. And so I think we've learned, even though we were forced into some of these things with the pandemic, I think it's going to forever change how we do certain things. Absolutely. That's great. We've had some other things that have happened throughout this year. Yeah. Well. So some other things, your, your trustees have been quite busy, um, even though there hasn't been as much happening in the building, although that's changing now, <laughs> the building's pretty full this morning. We, um, the trustees took on the project of the hardscape and landscape of the front yard and the sprinkler systems within that. Now that the church sign was done, it was something that had been postponed for a few years just because they weren't sure how much they wanted, what they wanted to do or to line up the the projects. If, if you're not aware, the trustees really do a good job of looking at the big scope of the church building and 
projecting different projects that'll happen and then working towards putting those together. And the front lawn and that, I think it'd been like 40 some years or more since something had been done to majorly overhaul that. And I don't know, the quilting bee shop across the street, those ladies thank us every day for how beautiful our front lawn is. There's still a few things I think that just so you're aware, it's not completely finished because in this world today, supply, demand, product, <laughs> shipping, the capstone. So if you look at the picture of the little, I don't, what did I call that? The little alcove. Guarding yeah. alcove. Those yeah. steps need to be fi fixed to have another step added. And the capstones still need to be placed on the entire wall, brick stone wall around the church. Inside that little alcove is going to be a scripted serenity prayer on a piece of stone. So it'll be beautiful that anybody who comes by our church, there'll be that serenity prayer that they'll be able to see. And just a few other minor details of just finishing touches on that. The trust, there's oh. some other things you would like to share too. I'm going to stop the screen share so they can see our faces. Oh, they're going to see our faces? Yes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> um, they've also, the trustees, if you notice, we have some new doors um, and our security system is up and running. Um, we have a whole new system, which has allowed our building to be nice and secure. And we don't have to worry about doors being left open and undone. And we have um, also new cameras. So those of you who worship at home primarily, uh, we now have three mounted cameras in the sanctuary. So those who do come into worship aren't distracted by a camera rolling around, but we've been able to update um, our media and technology, realizing that there will be people and forever we will have live on stream worship. That's so. Right. And then we have new banners as well. We do. We have new banners that are up in the sanctuary and there's just a lot going, but I think what we need to celebrate as a church, most importantly, is our continued care and comfort and love for one another and the way that we've continued to nurture and grow. It, I think it was shared last night um, from the staff parish that our worship attendance is really out of the United Methodist Church, what, the second highest? The second highest um, within our district yeah. um, right now. So um, we have continued to, to nurture one another, to care for one another, and be committed to that. And um, you all are to be commended for that. So thank you. And um, the, oh, I forgot one other thing, the yes. Africa University dorm. Yes. So with your commitments and your energy and just the history that this church has had with Africa University, we will be when they break ground this spring on the Africa University dormitory, our church will be sponsoring a room with our commitment. Um, we committed to raise $20,000. And I think we are going to go above yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, and so we should celebrate the fact that there is going to be a room for a young woman at Africa University because of our church. And so, providing that safety. Yes, the um, safety for them, which is so, which is really great. Yeah. So, so applaud yourselves. You. <laughs> yes. Thank you all for your uh commitment to the, the ministries of this church, to being the hands and feet um, of Christ in our community and around the world. Right. Uh, so we'd like to also share with you some updates on um, our staff and uh, some ministries that are happening here within the congregation as well. Um, many of you have heard that um, this year we've hired an additional custodian. Um, we are so very grateful for Kim and Beth and the work that they did throughout the pandemic, just the two of them, um, keeping this building clean and sanitized and um, all while we were looking for an additional custodian. Um, they worked extraordinarily hard during that time, um, but we are so very grateful that we have hired Mike Ponton. Um, he's a member of our church and he has come on as our third custodian and he will also be doing some maintenance work and um, because of his previous experience. Um, we are glad about that because <laughs> his maintenance work will actually help to save the church some money. Um, often we contract out um, minor repairs and such. Like um, leaky toilets. Like leaky toilets and things like that. And um, Mike will be able to, to do those things. He's already um, done several projects um, that have saved us some money. So significant amount of money. <laughs> we're, so we're grateful um, for Mike and um, his addition to our staff. Um, in addition, we have 
hired Peggy Pennington as our youth ministry coordinator. Peggy is not new to our church or to youth ministry. She has worked uh, with the youth for several years um, in a volunteer capacity with others um, who've been on the paid staff. But um, now we, have, we haven't we have had a youth person for, for some time, but we believe that that is a critical role within the life of our church. Um, ministry to youth is really important. And so um, we have designated money toward that and to be able to hire uh, Peggy as our youth ministry coordinator as a paid staff person. So we're glad to have her uh, with us as well. And speaking of youth ministry, Lara, why don't you talk about confirmation? Yeah, so we um, we are pretty blessed as a congregation and uh, we had to pause our confirmation experience be- Um, during COVID because we really didn't think uh, that was the best way for kids to really come into discipleship and membership in the church. And so this year, this past Sunday, we had our first confirmation gather um, official meeting and we had 15 youth that have committed 13 boys. (laughs) 13 13 boys boys. and two girls. So pray for Robin and I, but Robin (laughs) and I will be meeting with them monthly. um, And then there'll be a retreat um, in February or January, February time. And we are very, very, very excited for this group. And we are also asking some of you who are actually on this video today are going to serve as mentors to these youth. And so we're very blessed with that. And just yesterday, it was, it was crazy. We had the 15 kids down here and then above us, Peggy had the other youth um, that aren't in confirmation. So some of them are just of the sixth grade or some are middle school, but, and also some of our high school students um, that aren't in the confirmation experience because we've offered confirmation to those in eighth grade and above. Um, And so we had probably 25 youth after worship yesterday doing something in this building. So we should celebrate the youth of this church. Absolutely. So um, we are going to share some information. We're going to give you a snapshot of our current financial situation here at the church, and recognizing that whenever we take a picture or a snapshot, it shows us some information, but it doesn't give us the full the full picture, but we're, we want to, to give you at least a glimpse of what is happening with our finances right now um, and invite you to, to ask additional questions uh, that we might be able to answer for you just um, out of a sense of transparency so that people are aware of where we are. Um, so we have a slide here. I'm going to pull it up. It's not moving, but we will get it to move in just a moment. All right, (laughs) there we go. Um, So this year we have um, 14,000, 14, I'm sorry, $414,261 as of the end of uh, September is our income and wanted to share with you how that money has been received. Um, 175,000 of that is comes from our offerings. So our Sunday morning um, offering, the checks that come in the mail, those that are given online, um, $175,863 of that has come from the generosity of our congregation. Um, $17,639 of that has come from our rental income. So the rental of the Riverside Parsonage, as well as those who come in and use our building and and offer us a a small stipend for the use of the building. So um, that is that income. Um, We've had $462 in outside sources and $366 in fundraisers so far. Um, Of course, with COVID, we have not really really been able to have fundraisers this year. So that, that has been limited. Well, you'll see that um, a large chunk of our income comes from our memorial funds and our endowments. So $219,931 has come from our endowments and our proceeds on our investments. And we are grateful for those who have gone before us. Pastor Lara talked about Bill Daniels on Sunday in um, 
in worship and um, all of those who had the foresight to um, provide for the church's ministry um, in this time and beyond. So um, we are very, very grateful for those things. To give you an idea of how we invest the money that we receive, again, we are grateful for the generosity of those within our congregation, and we want you to know how your money is used, um, that we use it judiciously, and um, we want to be good stewards of all of the resources that have been given to us. And so uh, you all know that the church's mission statement is knowing God, loving God, and serving God. And so 13% of our income goes toward knowing God. When we all gather for Bible studies, small groups, adult children, youth activities, um, this supports our journey of faith together. This supports us and helps us to become better disciples of Jesus Christ. And it's a way for us to grow in our understanding of God's word and um, in love and fellowship with one another and uh, with Christ. Uh, this year, toward the end of the year and in the coming year, this area will be increased with the addition of Peggy as uh, a staff member. So um, we wanted you to be aware of that. Uh, the orange section of the pie represents loving God. Again, this is an important part of who we are, of our identity, of our mission. Um, when we gather together for worship, uh, we seek to be an authentic community of believers. Uh, we want people to find a home here at Lakewood United Methodist Church, um, and we gather to love God and to praise God together. And so uh, we, we love God through our, our spiritual disciplines, um, all of the, the special things that we do during worship, labyrinths and prayer time, those types of things. Um, so this particular area of ministry supports our music staff, as well as a portion of Pastor Lara's and my salaries are included here because it's an important component of what of what we do here. Um, and then other things, you know, like worship supplies, candles, communion, communion, <laughs> all of those kinds of things come under um, loving God. And then um, the blue part of the pie, 22% of it goes toward mission, us um, being in mission to the world, um, sharing Christ's light with people, because we know that our world is uh, a broken world um, where people are hurting and uh, in sharing our love with one another. And um, we are uh, the hands and feet of Jesus, the body of Christ in the world. So this is um, where that that comes. As Laura shared earlier, we have our community meal. Um, our church building is open to a variety of groups, AA, OA, Al-Anon, et cetera. We uh, work with Trials for Hope, um, things like that. And then um, also in this section, it includes our um, Apportionments. So that's our <laughs> shared, shared giving. Our shared giving that helps us um, pool our resources together with other United Methodists to be in ministry throughout the world to, to um, support missionaries and their work and um, other works of justice that happen throughout the world. And it's in a very important connectional giving. It is very important connectional giving. And we are grateful. Um, we have designated the proceeds of one of our. Um, investment funds so that we pay that um, that fair share uh, 100%. So um, we're grateful for that. And then the last section, you'll see the yellow section, um, is administration. And that's not just staff. It's not just <laughs> staff. It helps with the maintenance of our building, which gets utilized for a variety of things. We are so very blessed by our building. It's a place where people have, have gathered for over 100 years. We've been um, a beacon of light in our community and allowed um, the space to be utilized by a variety of groups. So um, this administration um, pays for staff that keep the building um, up as well as our office staff and um, it maintenance on our our two parsonages, the parking lots, um, lawn care, snow removal, all of those things that allow us to be the space for people uh, to come and, and gather. 
So um, it also is, as I said, office staff salaries, benefits and such for, for those folks. Um, we also wanna let you know that we have spent um, some time with um, <clears throat> Kevin, the chair of the trustees, as well as Marge, our finance chair, and Sally, um, our and finance Jenny. manager, and Jenny, our operations manager, looking at our various contracts, especially with the hiring of Mike. Um, but we've looked at some of our, our maintenance contracts and such so that, um, we want to be sure that we are utilizing our funds in the best way possible. So this fall, we've spent some time um, on that as well to be sure that we are, we're getting um, the best use of our, our money in those areas. And I think with that also knowing that COVID has also changed some of the way we spend our money. And so we've been spending spending now <laughs> we've been um, taking the time to really evaluate as we look into the budget for this year and looking at where where we have expenses or not because a lot of things have changed with where we're spending money that is true <clears throat> things things have changed but um, we're being very good stewards of our resources of our resources <laughs> Yes. Um, one of the things as I arrive, a, a new set of eyes coming and looking at things here at Lakewood United Methodist Church, I have been very blessed to be appointed here and working with Pastor Lara and all of you. Um, but one of the things that has concerned me since uh, my arrival, and as I look at the big picture of things here and look at our church's finances, uh, when I showed you that graph, the first slide um, with uh, where our money comes from, um, it has concerned me that um, less than half of our budget is funded through giving. So if you look at this chart here, 42.5% uh, of our budget is funded through giving, and the 57.5% is funded through our investments and other sources of income. And um, in order for our church to continue to sustain itself um, and to really be a vital ministry here in our community, um, it, it's important for us to align that chart in a better way. I would ideally love to see it be over 50% <laughs> of our budget being funded through giving. Um, again, we're grateful for um, all of the investments and the ways our trustees have stewarded the, the money that has been entrusted to us. Um, but I would like to see, uh, we all would like to see mm -hmm. our um, that part of the pie increase. So my goal for 2022 is to see that increase. Ideally, I'd love to see it increase to 50%. In 2020. And if it does, man, we are, <laughs> we're going to do something. Uh, we haven't quite decided yet. Maybe I'll let, we're looking at a pie chart. Maybe I'll let somebody put pie in my face if we make um, it to 50%. But the goal would be oh, somebody's trying to get in the church. So somebody's <laughs> trying to, to get in the doorbell downstairs. So we, we, if we increase this, we're, Robin and I are game for ideas of what you want to do. Ways to, to um, celebrate to celebrate <laughs> that uh, increase again we are grateful for your generosity and um, giving but it's helpful for us to to get a clear picture of what's what's really happening here and so on my next slide I'd like to just show you the number of households in our congregation and where the giving stands um, we are grateful for every contribution that comes in um, but you'll notice that, there are, are some households that give less than $100 a year and others that give $5,000 a year or more. And every gift um, is valued. Every gift is used um, in a way that um, glorifies God's kingdom. That's what we want to do here. Um, but ideally, we would like to see more um, higher, higher bars over on the right side of that, that graph. And so we just show that to you as a way to, um, for you to see perhaps where you might be. And maybe you can move one bar over um, as we prepare for Commitment Sunday um, next week. And I think, so, and I come back to um, what I shared this Sunday with Mr. Daniels, with Bill Daniels. And his gift to the church um, wasn't meant to be a gift to get out of jail free kind of card, right? Right. His gift he he gave because he he saw the future and he he saw the needs. 
And but, it was a part of his, his own mm -hmm. discipleship, you yes. know, giving ad, out of gratitude for all that God has done for yeah, us. Yeah. He was, he was very blessed and he was smart and with his investments. Um, and so he gave back to something that meant the world to him, which was the church and his relationship with Christ. But he called us all and challenged us to be productive as disciples. Right. And so I, I think we look at, um, I, I challenge the young families. I challenge all of us, all of us, all of us to look at the, we all receive benefits from the church, right? We, we walk through the doors, we have the fellowship, we, we receive benefits. Um, and for us to think about the ways that the church impacts our personal lives and the way that God works in us, how can we give back? Um, you know, it's, it's, we're all called to be productive. So this isn't just a call about money. This is a call truly about discipleship, discipleship. Absolutely. And what it means That's to be a disciple. It. Yeah. And so our, again, our vision for the future is for the church to be able to sustain itself through, through giving. We are grateful again for investments. We know that the market is good right now. Um, we, you know, we, we rely on that, but we never know. And so, um, we, our giving would, would help increase that. Uh, so we have great vision for 2022 here at Lakewood United Methodist Church. Um, we have done a survey on worship and Pastor Lara is going to share yeah. a little bit about that. And um, we'll tell you. So some. currently um, 89 households or individuals have filled out the survey. So Thank you. Thank you so much, congregation. Um, we're hoping we get even a few more responses in. Uh, if you haven't taken the survey yet, uh, please contact Pastor Robin or myself and we'll get send you the link if you can't find it. But we put together this survey because when we were working with the leadership team, we realized we need to figure out what where are we going as a church? Uh, what direction are we taking? What are the needs of this congregation? How can we meet the needs of this congregation when it comes to worship and other things? And honestly, just to get a kind of a look at COVID and where people stand and how comfortable they are to, to do certain things and what's important to us. And so we did this because we're like, okay, COVID brought us to a reality that we've lived in. But now is the time that as a church, we could be like, okay, where are we going? What is the new reality for our church and how can we meet the needs of our community? And so it's kind of a time for us to like reimagine. Yeah. Re be bold. <laughs> and it invites us to be bold and it gives us opportunity to explore doesn't have to uh, always where be. we go. Yeah. We it does, doesn't always have to be what it was. That's right. So we've done this survey and um, in the next couple of weeks or so, we're going to be meeting again with the leadership team to determine what best suits our needs. But I will say it has highlighted some of the most important things. The glimpses of the survey I've seen so far is that everybody believes that prayer and the Lord's prayer, there's some certain things that when it comes to worship that are absolutes. And we appreciate that. Um, we will be looking through that. And we will say that going into the new year, um, hopefully with COVID vaccines for children and people getting their booster shots, we'll be able to work towards going back to a new to, normal to the, and to the three styles of worship and to the three styles of worship. It will, it, we can say that it will look different than yeah. it did before. Um, but because we've learned that community is important together, but mm -hmm. those styles of worship are also important to people. Um, so it will look a little different than before. We don't know exactly what that will be <laughs> yet, but we're working together with the leadership to make, yeah. to we make also that happen. I think we also know, and we thank you all for your patience with that. I know a lot of you, um, I, the one thing we can say for certain is that the survey has brought to light that we all like different styles of music right? <laughs> and, and that's okay. And, 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 and truly congregation, we have weathered COVID better than most other congregations. And a lot of that is because of your flexibility and willingness to, to compromise and we have, I think, grown as a congregation together through this time. And not just flexibility, but their steadfastness and, and commitment to what mm -hmm. really matters. Yeah. Um, and that is faith in Jesus Christ and um, fellowship with one another. So, but it's been beautiful. It has been, it has been beautiful <laughs> but to be we together. Will. Yes. But we know that also to grow the, con to grow the church, we do need to offer more than just the awakening and that combined service, right? The way it is right now. Right. Um, in the new year, we also are looking forward to some new ministries. Yes. Um, 
seeing an increase in Bible studies. We've already um, seen that with Carson Collins uh, starting a new men's group. And uh, Julia Toke is going to be beginning um, a ministry starting in February, uh, small group studies. Um, we have the COVID healing group that's starting this tomorrow. Yes, that's right. I was going to say and Wednesday, I, and but I wonder that's tomorrow. If people are thinking, well, that doesn't really apply to me. And I think I, I, how many of you have been affected by COVID? <laughs> Every we single one have. of us. Yeah. And so <laughs> this group is really just a way for people to come and process in fellowship, as well as me creative with art or if you, and you don't have to be good at art. You don't have to be good at art. It's a, but it, yeah. it was a kind of a response to the, the leadership team, just so you're aware, the leadership team gathered for a meeting and in that meeting, the leadership team charted a brainstorm. And so then we put it out into an email and asked people to share back what they would be interested in doing. And so from that, we have Carson and we have Julia Token. We have uh, a wellness Wednesday ministry that's going to start in January with some health stuff. So really what's come out of reaching out to all of you saying, what are your needs? Or what kind of ministries do you want to be a part of? Or what do you dream of doing in this congregation? We've had some amazing responses. And we've recognized that, be, especially because of COVID, that healing is mm -hmm. um, a really critical component. Um, healing within uh, ourselves, healing within our community, even after shootings that have taken place here. We've got some ideas for some healing gardens, perhaps at Madison Park. We've had a lot of great ideas um, in the ways that we can be at work in our community. So I think this so. is, that's an important thing is, is as we envision what Lakewood United Methodist Church is going to be going forward. We live in a world right now that the, the people need us. People yes. need us in this congregation. And so what can we do to meet the needs of just not only those within the walls of our church, but outside the walls of our church and the community, that healing garden. I, I hope to see that healing garden take yes. place at Madison Park. So. Yes. And there will be other opportunities that we have not yet even thought of or dreamt of, or they may be thinking um, of one that right you now. all might be thinking of even as we speak. Um, and so we're, we're grateful for that. It doesn't diminish any of the ministries that have been happening here. Um, mm. We know that there have been some health and wellness ministries that have already happened here. So they're Eleanor. just going to be Eleanor. <laughs> so we're grateful for that too. Uh, so there's, there's many, many more opportunities among us. And we want to be permission giving in, um, in people moving forward and sharing their faith with the people in our community. So that just um, gives you a brief um, overview of the great things that have been happening within the life of our congregation in the last year. And we would like to open it up in the chat uh, for you to ask any questions that you might have of us as we uh, conclude our time together today. There was a question emailed to me that I forgot to tell you. Um, okay. So there was a question emailed to me overnight about what's going on with the United Methodist Church and the way forward. Because I think the last time we had to say the church address before, that was the main focus <laughs> of it. But I um, will say I was a part of the delegation last week um, for the North Central Jurisdiction and um, overwhelmingly 81% um, voted to support a covenant to build a beloved community. And so when we look at the whole jurisdiction, basically 81% say, I want to stay United Methodist. And want um, to be welcoming of all people. And welcoming of all people. And so we had focused on um, the baptismal vows. And I would be more than happy to share out the covenant that we wrote. But basically saying that we're going to truly take on racism and be welcoming to those who live in poverty and to the LGBTQIA plus community. And so, and that we're really going to be looking um, for just how we can reimagine what the United Methodist Church is and to also give permission um, to those who want to leave in a graceful way. Um, so to the congregation. So I'm more than happy to share with this, but it looks Truly, I'm, we're not sure still what's going to happen with general conference um, or even the next jurisdictional conference, but we've said, you know, regardless, we're going to elect bishops as a jurisdiction and what well, we're going to do our best and offer grace for those who 
want to exit this without a lot of it's about money, which is right. sad. <laughs> Sadly, that's, um, that's what things boil down to. So right. I, I, we do have this. So I think some of, some people have been asking, you know, what's going on Lakewood United Methodist church. We just got to keep doing what we're doing and we will remain United Methodist. Yep. So, um, oh, one other question as, as you all are formulating your questions and typing them into the chat, um, there was a question that had come up last night about our pastor's love fund and, uh, wanted to let you all know that, that we do utilize that, that love fund to help people in need in our community. Um, and pastor Laura, would you share a story oh. about that? <laughs> um, yeah, so we, we use this love fund for a variety of reasons. Um, and many of you have given to that and there's, it's, it's a gift as a pastor, um, in this, in this congregation to be able to have this fund that when somebody comes to you with a need that you're able to meet that need. And, um, well, after we did that warming center a few years back, there was a gentleman who came to me that had a need, um, and he was homeless and living in a van and his van broke down and he needed it repaired. And it was his only way to stay warm at night and all of that. So we as a congregation um, repaired his van for him. And he, to this day, has re replenished. You know, we gave the gift out of that love fund as a gift. And he replenished that gift um, and has paid back the church in full and then some for the way that we reached out. And now he actually... This is a beautiful story. He now has an apartment. He's living um, on the west side here and um, continues to stop by and say hello to our church. And is a, um, it's just truly a blessing of the way that we've made a difference um, in As someone's a, life. Yeah. So, so we helped him get on the right track. So do you have questions for us? If you would pop, pop those up in the chat so that we can can answer any questions for you. If you don't, we will be um, making the video of this, um, this morning's meeting available. We will also be, we had some questions that came up last night. So we'll be sending out an FAQ document with that um, to answer any questions that folks I have. If you think of things even after today's meeting, please feel free to email Pastor Laura and me. Um, you know, our whole uh, approach, our whole reason for doing this is to be open and to communicate with the congregation about what's going on and to be transparent. Um, so we are, are certainly open to answering any of the questions that you might have um, about our church and its ministries. But we really... I, I honestly, we thank you all for tuning in because this is, it's our church, it's your church, um, and we're leading, but you all make this possible. That's right. We, uh, we are all the church. The church is the people, and that's the most important thing. So it doesn't look like there's any additional questions. So Pastor Laura, would you pray I get to out? pray. Yay. <laughs> Gracious Lord, I thank you for all of us who've gathered this morning to just learn together and grow together in our understanding of the church you have blessed us with. Lord, we realize that everything we have is a gift from you. And so, Lord, thank you. Thank you for bringing us all together to be your church here in Lakewood, Ohio. Be with each of us as we go about our day, as we work as we play, as we look for ways that we can encounter others and share your love. Be with us all in this season of fall and help us remember the blessings you have poured onto us. Amen. Oh, let me see. Uh -oh. Something has come in. That's okay. Can you see what that says, Scott? Okay. It says, well done, ladies. Very informative. Great to see the over. Marching ways, always see, serves the community. Okay, great. Wonderful. Um, so thank you. Thank you all again for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you in worship on Sunday or online worship. And uh, have a wonderful day. Thank you.